Um, question before we start. How many folks here are using Timberstone today? So, quite a few. All right. So, we're going to talk today about Core Cloud Systems, which is um, an application that uh, integrates basically flows in association with Timberstone. So I'm guessing that probably most people here, you started out using Timberstone, or maybe you still are using Timberstone, from the perspective of EP monitoring, right? So you're taking your invoices and processing them through the system and pushing them off to approvals, and then uh, once the approval is done, everything pushes into the same system. So what's happened with Timberstone over the past few years is that the product has evolved. It's not just an AP routing approval system anymore. It's actually a full enterprise content management system. So it can take any document stored in the system. You can actually route those documents around for review and approval. And then those documents can actually integrate with Sage Defense as well. So what's happened is, is that a lot of companies are still at a point where Outside of accounting, outside of AP, um, project managers and what have you, they're using probably the Windows file system, right, to do a lot of uh, document storage. Problem with the Windows file system is that it's it has many problems. Um, it, it's nice if you want to just go out and start creating folders, but it becomes the wild, wild west, right? Anybody can do anything they want. They can put documents anywhere they want, and then try and go find them when you need them. For whatever reason. Plus, there's really no integration with Sage 300 when you're just dropping documents into the folder. So what we're going to talk about today with Core Cloud Systems is basically a way that you could use pretty much any aspect of your organization in much the same way that you're doing AP routing and approval today. Where you can basically create kind of a mobile uh, solution to be able to take anything that you want, create a workflow around it, and then have it integrate with both Timberstand or Sage uh, 100, if you're using 100, or, uh, or Sage 300, and the information is all tied and it's integrated just like AP. So we're gonna start, um, I'm not big on PowerPoints. Um, if you sat into my presentation yesterday, you know that. But I just wanna go through uh, a few slides and just show you a couple things just to kind of set up what we're going to talk about. So basically, Core Cloud Systems, it's a, it's a cloud-based platform that offers electronic forms, electronic orders, and a mobile application. It can be deployed using any type of a mobile device. The foundation of Core Cloud Systems, it's a rapid, it uses a rapid development engine so it allows for creation of custom modules, if you will, very quickly that are linked to Timberstand and to Sage. We're going to talk a little bit about the customization, but also understand that there are some standard um, applications that are already built in the system, and we're going to talk about some of those this morning as well. So. When CCS companies can have all three electronic forms, or excuse me, all their electronic forms, I should say T-H-E-I-R, by the way, my apologies, all their electronic forms and mobile modules on a single platform from a single supplier. So if, and we're going to talk about this in a little bit more detail here in a few moments, but if you're using Excel to solve a problem in your organization, you've gone to the App Store and you've downloaded an app from the App Store to, to solve some other type of problem, maybe you using um, you know, some sort of a payroll app or a human resource app or something like that. Basically, you have all of these disparate applications that really don't talk to each other. And in many cases, in most cases, they don't talk to Sage 300 or Timberstone. The idea behind this is this is a single source for all of your applications. You basically, it's, a, it's an app creator, if you will. And we'll, and we'll kind of talk about that as we go a little bit further into it. There are basically kind of four core features associated with uh, CCS. There's the forms wizard, which we're going to talk about. 
the workflow, there's reporting, and there's also global folders, um, which we'll get into, but I want to show you how easy it is to be able to take documents or take forms, if you will, and after they've been created and they've been manipulated, how they can just drop right into TimberScan, for example, and be stored there and let TimberScan become your repository. And there are a whole list of functions, if you will, forms and also modules or solutions that have already been created in the system and there are more to come. All of these that you're seeing, all of the forms, the standard forms that are built in the system, and all of the solutions or modules all integrate with TimberScan and this H300. Okay, let's get out of PowerPoint and let's take a couple of scenarios here. So let's say, for example, that Let's start off with a scenario. Let's say that um, uh, folks are going out and they're, they're traveling for business, traveling to a company. So they get back from uh, their trip, whatever it is, and they have to fill out some sort of expense So chances are what many companies have done is you may have created some sort of an Excel spreadsheet that someone has to go and fill out in order to be able to open the spreadsheet if I can. So here's what happens. Someone fills out a, a spreadsheet where they put in their expenses, for example, right? <coughs> and then they have their receipts. They take the expense reimbursement report. They take the receipts. They probably email that or what have you to accounting in order to get reimbursed and accounting has to go through and they have to process the information. So on top of that, if you decided after this had been filled out that you maybe wanted to save it somewhere, so you wanted to go to a repository and actually save that document so you could bring it up somewhere, what you have to do is if you decided that you wanted to use TimberScan to save that document, what you would do is you would go into TimberScan AIM, you would acquire the document, and then you would have to file the document under whatever it might be, because it was expense report or actually, and you'd have to fill out all the information again. So from, a, from the standpoint of actually storing the document, now I've got to take that document, I've got to save it in my repository by indexing all of the information associated with that document. So that if I want to look at it later on, I can go find it later on. Okay? Let's take a different example. Let's say uh, we have a daily report that, again, maybe it's something that you've created where you're filling out the information and you know people in the field are, are, are processing information on this daily report and now we want to save that daily report in, in your repository. So again, what do you have to do? You have to come in here, and I would have to take that daily report, acquire it, drag and drop, or what have you. I'd have to go through, and I'd have to code and index that daily report in order to get it into the system. So we plug this information in. I have to say what job it's associated with. And what that allows me to do is, once I've saved it in timber scan aim, now what I have is I, I have all that information in my repository. But it basically took several steps in, in order for us to get there, right? First of all, someone has to fill out the information using a spreadsheet or a third-party app or whatever they did. Then someone has to take that document, they have to save it into timber scan and you have to code it in that. So the idea behind Core Cloud Systems is eliminate all of those spreadsheets, all of those third-party applications, if you will, and do everything in one system. So if I log into Core Cloud, this is basically kind of the master menu where I have you know, various information which we'll talk about, but we're going to start off by, let me go show you the um, expense report. So if I go to my jobs, should have an expense report in here, so. 
So what would happen is, is that in poor cloud systems, what you would do is you would create a form, an electronic form, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a couple of minutes. And then that electronic form would be dispersed out to the, to the people that you want to, have to be able to use it. And then what they would be doing is they would be filling out the information on the form. So if I go through here and I start filling out my expense report, I'm putting in, for example, you know, my employee name. And what it's doing, if you notice, it's searching the Sage database, just like as if I were in TimberScanner Sage 100, for validated information. So I'm now coming in here, I'm plugging in a valid employee number. Um, I put, put in my receipt date, for example. Um, let's say it's today's date. I go through, I plug in my job. Again, you know, it will do the search for me. If I'm plugging in a cost code, it comes down here. I can actually go through and start searching for my cost codes, and I plug in what cost codes is associated with. Now, I'm doing this on my desktop, and unfortunately, because of the fact that we're stuck with a, you know, the, um, the Wi-Fi that we're on here, um, I can't actually show you this on my iPad or my iPhone, so I'm going to pass this around in a little while. But all of this is actually able to be shrunk down to fit on an iPhone or an iPad, an Android device, so I could be out in the field somewhere. I could be filling out my expenses using my phone. If I need to attach you know, uh, pictures of the receipt or what have you, I can do all of that. And then you know, if it needs to be signed and approved, we do all of that and confirm the signature. And when this is done, I go ahead and submit that form. So now what ends up happening is that form gets submitted and it gets sent potentially over to TimberScan. So instead of someone having to come into TimberScan like you saw before, take that document, drag and drop it into the system, all I have to do, that document has already been placed in here, it's already been indexed. So now if I go out here and I want to look for my expense report, there it is. Just pull right up on the screen. So, not only have we created a way where you don't have to use the Windows file system to drop your documents in, but we've auto-indexed the document after it's been filled out in the field. So now, it doesn't, there's no duplication. No one has to go through and key this in again. No one has to take the document, drag it into TimberScan or, uh, or T100 for, for Sage 100. And it drops the document right into the system, fully coded. Same thing, same concept with the, um, the daily report that we were talking about. So if I go back over here to the cloud, and I'll bring up my information here. Same concept here. So let's say that I filled out the daily report. Again, I could be out in the field somewhere, I could be filling out this information, the date, uh, the weather, what have you, who was on the job. I submit this information, and again, when it gets submitted, it drops that daily report right into TimberScan, and I'm able to go find it very easily. My daily report, and I can just call it up and bring it up on the screen. So, so far what we've talked about is eliminating um, the, the idea of, of duplicate entry, if you will, and eliminating where you have to key something in and then someone else has to take that document and drop it into a repository. It's doing all of that for you in one step. Now let's go back to over to Core Cloud and talk about how this first part actually takes place. What I showed you was a, a document or a form that you would actually fill out. So how do we get there? It's really very simple. So if I go to form management, basically what I could do is I'm going to bring up a form here. And 
<laughs> look for the expense report. I think it's going to be yes. So what happens is, is that basically we have a, a wizard, and what the wizard does is it allows you to create any form that you want. Now, as you may have seen in the PowerPoint slide, we've already created a, a, a list of kind of standard forms that are already in the system. But what the wizard does is you can, you can then get very creative. You can say, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, I can go through and I can start processing and, and filling out this form. It's a, it's a matter of creating a form name. You create what are called categories if you want to break the form into different segments. And then it's a series of questions and answers. So here, if I want to charge that particular, take this form, this expense report, for example, and I want to do job charging. So maybe one of the fields that I want to use here is job number. This allows for the flexibility of creating a table, a lookup, and it ties to SAGE 300. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually taking the table, the job file, from Sage 300, and I'm attaching it here. So in the same way for anyone that's using TimberScan, for example, where you're keying in um, an invoice and you, you want to search for the job, basically you're doing the same thing over here. You're tying the data from Core Cloud Systems to Sage 300 through these tables. Not only that, and by the way, on these particular fields, you can basically do anything you want. So if it, need, it needs to be a date field, you can do that. If it's a table, uh, there are any number, of, you know, if it's a signature field, uh, you can set up uh, ticklers on here. Essentially, any field can be created and under any format. Now on top of that, back here for just a second and so I'll go back to Adam here and I want to show you that again I want to bring up one more thing okay so let's go back to the back to the expense report again in here, under the notifications, what I'm able to do using this, what's called the XML mapping, this allows me to link this form to any document in TimberScan. So, what you saw me do before was someone fills out the form, they submit it, the form automatically gets dropped right into TimberScan, no additional coding needed, and no one has to take that document drag it into the system, and index it from there. So how you do that is you link the form to whatever document type has been created in, in, uh, in TimberScan. And by the way, in TimberScan, you can set up unlimited user-defined document types. So in, in essence, you can link any form to any document type. That document then gets dropped immediately into TimberScan as soon as it's filled out and, and has been submitted, and the process has been completed at that point. And again, with the link to Sage 300, now each document type in TimberScan also creates file links to Sage 300. So if you drop it into TimberScan and you attach it to a document type and you've linked that document type to a field in Sage 300, now you can go into Sage 300, use the paperclip, and you can open up that document over there as well. So it basically flows from Core Cloud directly in TimberScan, and then using the, the paperclip functionality in Sage 300 as well. You have a full, basically a full audit flow of, of, of the document. Now, the other part is each of these documents also has um, an output. So basically what you do with the output is you're basically creating the PDF, if you will, that you're going to then send out to whoever it is that you want that you want to send it to, or if you just want to save it as a PDF or whatever other type of document you, 
you would say that. So you're basically kind of creating the the actual form that you want to if you wanted to send it to someone else. I'm just going to stop for a second and just ask if there are any questions so far. Yes. Um, it's not OCR within Core Cloud, but it's fully indexed. So if I wanted to go search for it, sure, I can just come in here, and you know I can say whatever the form is. I can go search and find it. If I want to find everything on a job, for example, or I just want to say just go find me my daily all my daily reports that we dropped in the system last week. Go right here. Someone out in the field, if they've done a daily field report, is there a way to copy that previous day to the next day if they're only yes. having the same couple? Yeah. <coughs> yep. Same daily expense reports? Same thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, every, every form you can copy. Options. Duplicate. Okay, so what we talked about, oh, this is actually the report designer that I, I, was, I was meaning to show you, where with each form, basically you're designing the output at the same time. So it's not just the form where people are filling out information, but also what do you want the output to look like? Again, it's using the wizard to be able to do that. So let's, let's flip this a little bit. So right now what we've talked about is taking <coughs> documents that are kind of non-AP, right? Non-accounting documents, using some, using the form to fill out the information, and then sending it to TimberScan automatically indexed. Well, let's talk about AP because there are some things that you can do with AP. Lots of things you can do with AP. One thing you could do is, if you wanted, to actually come back here to my jobs. If you wanted someone to fill out a purchase order and then take that purchase order and take the receiver, which again could just be a form that someone is filling out, you could do a three-way match so that once the purchase order and the receiver have been processed and they've been submitted in TimberScan, the system will automatically do the matching for you. So when I go to invoice entry and I call up that invoice, what I've done is I've taken the invoice and purchase order and receiver and all three are now linked to that particular invoice. So again, how we did that was when we created the form, we said, for example, what job, what vendor. So someone fills out that purchase order using just the same format that we talked about before, filling out a form that's a purchase order form. It creates the output and it does the three-way match. 
So now you have the invoice, the receiver, and the purchase order all linked together. In the These were not. These were purchase orders that were keyed into the forms tool in for cloud system. And again, the beauty of this is that you don't have to do this sitting at, at your desktop. Someone could be out in the field using their phone, right? And they're creating a purchase order right on their phone and then submitting it and sending the information in. Um, I'm actually going to show you that uh, in a little bit more detail here in a second. Okay. So um, actually, we could we could go there now. So what we again we we processed taking a purchase order, taking receiving ticket, done the three way match and attach it to the invoice. So let's talk about subcontractors for a second. Go back here. No, I was actually looking for the uh, subcontractor information. I have one filled out. I know. We go this way. Okay. Same thing. Okay. So the subcontractor payout, where basically what you're able to do is turn this into a portal. So let's say that sub, the sub um, actually uses this form to fill out the payout. When they're finished filling out the payout, that information can then get routed, let's say, to the project manager. Project manager then looks at the payout, and they're saying, we approve this, but we don't approve that, what have you. And then once that process is done, this form gets submitted as a fully coded invoice. So in TimberScan, all of the line item information has already been filled in, the payout has been created, and everything is there in front of you. So not only do, can you use this as just kind of a forms creation tool, but also as a portal, as a subcontractor portal. Or a vendor portal, where yes. So
making certain folders that are specific to that job. Because we're job centric in our security, we can go into this guy is a subcontractor, when he comes in, he doesn't get all the access that his internal user might get. So he only sees what's responsible for his jobs. You can you control that. And he can submit what payouts or submit pay labors. But you can send the form out to him in the route requesting maybe a you know pay labor or something like that. And you can attach it and send it in. We support electronic signatures. And in most six states, it's an acceptable. And if you need a notary, of course, they call it otherwise. And even though they got printed out. But at the end of the day, if you can you can define the experience for whoever comes in to, to the form. Yeah. Right. Even your own user. Well, so back here, so what, what I was showing you was the account thing. What I had just brought up was managing a user. So if I were to bring up a user, it's a little hard to see the screen uh, displayed up here. But basically, as you just asked, you can control what forms and what have you someone has access to. And then you can put people into groups if you wanted as well. So if you had like, you know, maybe, you know, a uh, project manager and maybe the subcontractor that's associated with the project manager, you want to put them into a group together, they access just that information and they can exchange data back and forth just among themselves if they wanted. So the idea is that this application is not just a forms creation tool. Again, it's a portal as well. And we've built a number of other tools around it, which we're going to talk about here in just a second. Um, but let's talk about credit cards now. Because this, again, is more of kind of an accounting function where What's typically happening is, is that um, people are purchase, making purchases using company credit card, for example, and then they have to submit their receipts, which in many cases, who knows when or if you're ever going to get the receipt. And once the receipts come in, you take the statement and you try and match the receipts against the statement, and then you try and take that data and somehow <coughs> formulate an invoice with the receipts against the state. So this starts to get us into the various uh, solutions that we've created around the, around the forms tool. One of those solutions is a credit card solution. So what it does is basically and actually, I'm going to back up here for just a second. What we're going to do is go back to the forms tool and just use the same concept. So you create a credit card form that people are now filling out. They're using their phone, they're using their iPad, they're doing whatever they do. And as they're processing, if they need to take a picture of the receipt, they can do it right on their phone. After this gets filled out, if it needs to be routed to anyone, or if you've built routing into this particular form, it gets sent to whoever it needs to go to for review and approval. So the system is not only just allowing you to submit forms, but it's also doing routing for you as well. The form gets routed, and once it gets approved, it then takes that information and it drops it into the credit card solution. So with the credit card solution, what I'm able to do is I can download a statement from the credit card company. The receipts that have come in are sitting over here in the open receipts area. So as people have filled out their form, they've completed the form, they've submitted the receipts, the statement is, uh, transactions are here. If uh, I go through and I were to actually reconcile, which I don't want to do this because I don't want to lose the, the data that's here. But if I click on the reconcile button, what it does is it does a match. And it starts matching the information from the statement against the receipts. If there are receipts that are missing, 
you can click on this Dingham button. And what this will do is this will actually send a, an email notification to the cardholder and it will send the transaction information along with it. All they have to do on their end, they click on the hyperlink, it opens up their form and allows them to attach the, uh, the receipt and submit it. Ultimately, once the information gets reconciled, you click on the transfer to TimberScan button, it creates an invoice in TimberScan for you fully coded. So, and you can do this in, in three different ways. The receipts can, you can have it separated so the receipts are separate invoices. You can do a, um, a summary invoice, uh, which doesn't necessarily have the receipts as supporting documents, or you can do a detailed invoice and have each of the receipts be attached to the invoice as a supporting document. You have the choice of the the three. So again, this reconciliation process allows for the elimination of having to go manually grab all that information, try and do the reconciliation against the statement, and then someone still has to go in and process the invoice. This eliminates all of that. Okay. Other things. Go back. There's a there's a a payroll solution. So we're going to start at the grid. Put it back here. Okay, so basically what happens here is what I'm doing is I'm looking at timesheets that have been submitted. Okay, let's think back to the whole concept of these, and there are different ways that they, these could have been created, and I'll talk about that in a second. But let's say that I'm uh, a supervisor, and people have submitted their time. I can simply roll down through here. I can look at their time, and I can start approving them as I go through them very quickly off of the grid. And then once I'm finished, I can just go ahead and submit this. And it sends this data right over to Sage 300. Um, as an export, you then import it into Sage 300. And all of the time card data that's been filled out processes into the payroll system without someone having to rekey. So how did we get here? Well, there are several different ways that, that could happen. One, again, if we go back to the forms, you could actually create a flexible form that people could go out and they could start filling out their timesheet. Same concept as before, they could fill this out in the field to do whatever they need to do. So you can have a form that, that actually does time processing. The other thing that you could also do, however, is we've also created other types of time entry. So in many cases, what we hear, we hear requests that you know, we'd like to have, for example, um, you know, a job super who is you know, filling out time for their crew. So we've built the payroll dashboard to allow you to do that. So now I can come in here, and I can select my crew. And once I do that, I've, what we've done is we've created a kind of a timesheet template where people can go through and they can fill this information in. I think the important thing to emphasize here is that this is completely customizable. So if you look at this and you say, well, this isn't the way that we would fill out our forms, basically what we do is we'll just modify it to your format and allow you to process it any way that you want. All of this that you're seeing was actually designed based on a on client request. So it's simply taking the information, allowing you to process, and then send it again into Sage 300. Okay. One of the neat things about this is as we build through our payroll and installation, we store those templates. So when we come to the profile, look at the discovery, you look at what you're doing, you 
Yes. Mm -hmm. We've deployed a couple of situations. One of them is we have a signature. So if you use an e-form, you can actually have them sign their their you know, like have an iPad and draw it. But we also have switched over to pins. So like for instance, if you give an employee a pin, it might be a Latin or four digits. So if they were a crew based contract and that might be a lot crew, your your employees would have to go in there and put their pin number. And then when it submits it to the grid, if they miss their pin number, Now, in conjunction with uh, with this, we also have a, a, a daily report solution. And in that solution, what we're able to do is not only fill out a daily report, but also process time against this as well. So this would allow for you to select a group of people, for example, and you could start putting in the time and processing it this way and have this linked right to a daily report. So rather than have two separate functions, one where someone has to go fill out a daily report and say who, what their, their crew was that was on, on the daily report and what have you, basically what you're able to do is use the daily report solution to process the information and also attach time, payroll time, for all of the employees associated with it. So another way of actually keying in uh, you know, time entry. What's nice about this is that, let's say that we've gone through and we've processed the daily report, and maybe what I'm, I want to do is, I want to create kind of my own report on the fly. I've actually set one up so you can see what it does. So basically, all of the fields that you see here, the date, the weather, the employees, the subs and what have you, those are all fields that are on a form. And all I did was I said, these are the fields that I want to make reportable on the form. And then when I select which ones I actually want to use for today, I generate the grid, and it then creates what looks like an Excel spreadsheet right here on the screen for you. So now I could actually manage my daily report right from here. And it processes everything, I can actually edit the form if I want, so now I can open it up if I need to, you know, complete other information, what have you. And then from here, I could even sign and submit it from this particular point if I want. Back to the solutions. One of the things that I didn't mention is that, again, getting back to the whole concept of using uh, you know, a subcontractor or a vendor portal is, under the financials area, basically what I have are invoices that have been processed, and again, I can just call these up, here's a subcontractor payout, where this could be filled in the same way that we talked about before, and then completed through here, and under the financials, it's all, it's all basically sitting in an area that's kind of, again, in that grid format, for me to be able to go see it and pull it up very quickly and very easily. So this gets more into kind of the what Concur does, where if anyone here knows Concur or you maybe use Concur, this kind of gets more into their format where you're able to kind of see and approve information using a good format for your invoices and then actually take this invoice and send it to TimberScan as, as a fully created invoice. Okay, there are several more solutions that we've been working on. One of them is a purchase order inventory solution. 
And what I think would be best would be if I actually had Steve kind of take this over and show you this part because he's the creative genius behind this. He knows it uh, better than me and can do it more justice. All right. Yeah. You don't hear me? I'm pretty loud and losing air, so <laughs> I don't like those microphones. So if y'all can hear me, I can, I'll kind of talk to you a little bit about the concept that we had. How many of y'all in here have purchasing and inventory in different lines? Okay, we replace that. Basically, what we did is we took the product, duplicated the features it had, and added a whole bunch of more stuff. So when you look at basic inventory, it's an inventory system. We set up location management. So for instance, for you guys that are like plumbers, electrical guys, where you want to you know, bring in, we conceptually teach you a best practice where you bring your inventory into a main warehouse and then you do allocations to the jobs and then basically after the job is finished you can consume the, the, the material and then bring it back in uh, and bring it back in the inventory so that your shrinkage is a little, little bit less. Um, when we first started the system we've got about nine now that are out in the field and what we're finding is that uh, everything that we do inside of here like for instance if we're doing a purchase order or, uh, or a worksheet or a receiving or an allocation all of that can be done in an untethered phone that means i'm not connected to the internet and basically processed in the field so if for instance if you generated the purchase order in the field hit the button it would automatically come in here and drop into the purchase order section i'll show you that in a minute i just i'm not going to spend on here for a long time if i came in and i said i do a material request so i'm the field foreman i say look i need this 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 they have access to the inventory on their phone. They can pick what they want. They hit submit. It goes into our worksheet. And the purchasing looks at the worksheet, decides which vendor they want to buy it from, auto generates all the POs. Okay. So if I, when you talk about field uh, uh, integration, receiving, of course that's going to be happening in the field or maybe the warehouse. But in the field, they're going to do the receiving. They can receive right there. It automatically comes in and updates inventory. If they're doing allocations or transfers, like they might be doing a transfer from one location. Like if you had your job site had connex boxes where you stored your inventory or you had logistics areas where you put it, you might transfer it from point A to point B. But you can have a form that the guys can sign off on whenever they make the transfers, right? So all that's done in the phone, mobile environment, iPad environment, and it feeds the, the main system, okay? Yes? You can put tools in there. Uh, we have a, it depends on how you manage tools. Are you talking about the disposal tools or the tools that go back and forth? Yeah, we, we, you can do that here, okay, because we have items that we call our inventory or non inventory. Like if you were doing a price book, like we have an electrical guy that has like, he buys from 10 different areas, he downloads all of their price books, but he doesn't keep inventory. He just uses them for costing and pricing and stuff when he's doing his videos. Uh, you can set that up in tools, like the same way where it's a, it's a non-inventory item, it's an asset item, and you can track it using our system. We can actually do that inside of uh, eForms without inventory, because we have a kind of a pseudo equipment module. It's, we do the essentials. One of the things I think Mike alluded to is if you notice what we do, you know, you can buy products that do a lot more than what ours does for specific applications, maybe outside of inventory, because I think this is, you, you nailed it. But at the end of the day, we do the essential stuff. You know, we've been around construction for 30 years. We know what y'all do. I've sat behind your desk. You know, uh, most of the guys in our company have sat behind the desk, so we know where you know where the pain points are, and, and so that's when we build our software. And when we design our software, that's why you guys can use AP. Could I give anybody a thousand dollars right now to give it back? Would anybody take that offer? Right. Well, think about that through your whole company. All your forms, daily reports. I mean, if you've used AP, the concept, especially timber scan, if you use an AP timber scan, it's it's a I mean the return on investment is what? Three months, four months? You know, you wouldn't give it back. I remember one time we had a lady, she literally went to tears and said, You saved my life. You know, we we're like doing this presentation, and, and what she said was I was working seven days a week because we were a specialty contractor, our business doubled. Our paperwork doubled, our invoices doubled. She said, you know, we came in with timber scan and we fixed it. She was half her time and her and her, her she was able to get her job done in a five day week. You know, and she was just so elated about it. Y'all probably have the same stories, right? You know, I'm from Louisiana. 
and we put those dogs in our cars. That you know, the heads do this. You know what I'm talking about? If you're going down a bad road and it's doing this. So when y'all when I say yeah, you know, I'm looking at this, I like to see the audience. It's kind of if you do this, I'm gonna call on you and say, why is it not doing it? Because we must have not done our job, right? So that's kind of how I get the, the audience to respond. So anyway, back to inventory. But basically what we did with inventory is we felt like inventory is inventory management, but you need to have it out in the field. These guys need to be able to do their work out in the field. They're the ones that actually use it. So, you know, in the office in the backside where we work, basically we're just managing the the the, 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 the minus, right? So when you go through our system, it's pretty basic as far as that goes, but we get some kind of cool stuff. Okay, first and foremost, there's several methods of buying stuff. So the first mm -hmm. method, uh, so the first method here is I can buy for a job or I can buy for a warehouse and I can it'll isolate the difference. But like here, if I come in and I say, you know, I want to buy 10 or 12 of these and I want to come in here and buy 12 of these and say I want to buy 12 of these. Now, we know that we buy it normally from Ace Drywall, but let's say that I come over here and I want to change my vendor. Um, Alright, so maybe I want to change my vendor on this guy. And let's see if I got any in here. Yeah, let's have get that from Mark Electric. Okay, so these two items I'm buying from this company, this one item I'm getting from Mark. So at this point in time, I can come in here and basically just create the PO. Now, what's cool about that is it automatically created how many POs? Two. Okay? So I can go through there. You can see them right here. I can come over here and I can edit it. Now, since it's all integrated, right, I can edit the vendor information, ship to, I can send an email because when I punch submit PO, it's going to do three things. First off, it's going to send the timber scan and copy the image of this PO. Second, it's going to send a transaction to timber mine so it's automatically taking your order to say 100 I call it timber mine uh, uh, so it, it, it's going to send that transaction there and the third thing it's going to do it's going to send an email to the vendor just by touching that button so what I just did right here is I created two POs ordered the item sent them to the vendor pushed it into the uh, from one touch one touch of the button so could y'all use that <laughs> but anyway, that's 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 how simple this process is. We can design the output. So if you want your PO system put in there, uh, we had some really crazy things that you can imagine as we went through the uh, the setup. Uh, first and foremost, in the report selection, uh, when you do the report selection, uh, we had to set it up because some POs or subcontracts or commitment POs. That means we got to send a tax certificate or something like in New York. You know, we get one for an electric company that he has more of a descriptive style. So we made it to where in the PO system they can type up to 5,000 characters and we format it so that it looks like a paragraph as opposed to a standard PO book. But you can give them the ability to choose which form you want to use, you know, while you're doing your PO. The second thing is we do the tax information. So what we do is we manage, just like the standard PO system does. Inventory, we can base the tax based on the inventory item and the job, so we look at all that. And if something's exempt or pieces are exempt, we can handle that. And we also built in what we call a tax exempt group. So if it's exempt, but yet there's a tax like in New York again, where there's a special tax applied, we can handle both taxing scenarios. And if we run across another scenario, guess what? We're going to fix it because we use a rapid development tool that Mike alluded to. I can turn code in here in less than a half a day. So if I need to add a tax functionality that we haven't covered, we can use our tool, build the code, and it'll be, it'll be inclusive for everybody else that buys the system. But we can do these things and make it happen. Have you asked Sage to modify their system? Right? <laughs> and if they would just do that one little thing, it would make it so much better. Because it's a good product. I mean, we're not picking the product. It's just that it's, it's a canned package. This is not canned. Now we're trying to get it there because we're trying to add features so that we don't have to keep customizing it. But everything we do, you probably if you're a core customer, everything we do comes from y'all. So all the features, you know, we meet probably what, four times a year, five, and review all the customer issues. And then we go, hey, this would be a great idea, hey, this would be, you know. 
and we incorporate. And we do the same thing here with Core Cloud. So just kind of keep that in mind as well. Um, as far as the, uh, the basic functionality, though, I'm going to go ahead and submit that PO. So I can go ahead and here and do this. I'm going to submit it. Uh, boom. Um, now, when I get over to receiving, remember I told you all that I had a receiver form? In my, on my phone, I could have a receiver with a guy in the warehouse or whatever. He's on his iPad or on his phone. He can go in there and receive it. And when he pulls up the PO, it's only going to show him the items that are part of that receiving. So if I come in here, And so when I get over here to receiving, all right, there's Barth Electric, and then down here on the bottom, I have all the, the items received. Now it assumes some things. Now, this is something I'm not sure, you know, let's say uh, purchasing does. <coughs> a couple of features, okay? If you're in lumber, or you buy certain things where you do a PO for 10, but you really don't know what you're gonna get, right? So what we have is at this point in time, you can change the cost, you can, it's a setting, so you may not offer this to everybody. You can change the cost, you can change the quantity, and it readjusts the PO and sends a commitment change order to the Timberline if you're using or to save if you're using that model. Okay? If you over receive, you lumber, you buy hats, you don't really know how many pieces come into that hat. So what happens here is when we go in and say we bought 12 and got 15, but we agree that hey, we know that factor happens. Well, instead of having to go do a change order, it automatically handles that transaction. Just change the number here, just, you know, receive the commitment, complete it up here at the top, and it makes the adjustment for you and sends all the correct, correct paperwork into the right system. Does that make sense? Yes. This is standalone from the tender stand or this is purchase from the Well, it's, it's core cloud. So the idea behind it is you can, we don't like you to because we have so much of the integration built in the timber stand. But what are you, what are you, are y'all using another product? Well, we can, we can feed, it may not have all the functionality that we have built inside of Timberscan, but we would sell four cloud systems, you know, and we do to, to uh, other folks that use other systems. But we just have some kind of special stuff. <laughs> just kind of, I'm not trading you know, your system for this. But, uh, but anyway, we can definitely talk about that. Okay. Um, so in the receiving side again, you can do the receiving, uh, and and I want to go ahead and do this because I think the, the this is a part right here that um, that is really kind of interesting, and we're getting a lot of good press from this. So when I submit this, what's going to happen is that this is allocation. All right, sheet metal guy buys sheet metal, goes into his cam system, decides what he's going to buy, and then basically. Hey, so it basically goes in there and sits up and says, okay, I'm going to build this item, all right? So it's going to go through what, a WIP account, and then once it goes out and it's finished, then it's going to go into get coded out for the job. So you have some light manufacturing, if you want to call it or whatever. What we have here is you can set up the job, okay? You can do, first off, you can do a reserve that says, okay, the my tech machine gave, can spit out and said, I need this bill material, okay? Put the reserve in there, add the items to it, and see what you got. And it'll tell you, I got 10 of these, one of these, five of these, you gotta order this, this, and this. Okay? And then you can go place your orders. And then you can move those items into that warehouse to protect it. Okay? And that's what transfer does. Transfer doesn't necessarily have to do a physical move, but it does a virtual move. Now you can physically move it, but what it actually does for you is it basically transfers the items so that it comes out of the main warehouse. So when the guys are looking for what they can go get, they're going to see, oh, in the main warehouse, I've got 10, but on all these jobs, I've got 10 more. Well, you might go rock here and pay Paul. I need this now. Let me go get it from that job, and then we'll transfer an order to the other job. So allocation allows, or transfer allows you to move your product back and forth. You can do all that in the field. Okay, we'll talk. Um, basically, <laughs> what we have here is the consume function. Now, everything we write is general ledger literature. Everything that, that we build is going to be a subledger to the system. So every transaction that happens here, we either handle the detail and import it into the job cost system as a transaction, or I can use it to build what workflow I need. So 
So, for instance, if I were in manufacturing and I said I wanted to move from inventory to whip before I consume, I could build that off the transfer function. Okay? If I want to consume immediately from the transfer, I can do that as well. And then in the transaction, I can actually create the transaction do the import automatically in the humor line or in the safe 100 and basically be able to handle the GL side and the booking side <coughs> different than having to work it through AP. So like if you're buying inventory, you would buy inventory, you book the uh, transaction, debit to inventory, you credit it to unvouched and receiving, and then when you vouch it, that's when you actually book the council cost. You can do the same thing if you're using inventory with our system. So, so you have that function, that flexibility to be able to do it. Uh, the final thing here is on allocation. We have a whole work process for picking tickets and things like that. Um, we actually, uh, gentleman here sitting right here, Lanier is the one that brought us out in the field. So now on their side, all of their form functionality is done on the phone so that the picking ticket process and all that is pretty much, we turned it off so that we can do it from the form. From the form. And they basically have their idea, that's Lanier, and he has our inventory, and he's new. So they just, they're just they just going online. But uh, we built all of the forms that he needed on the phones, untethered, with very simple input because that was the requirement of the, of the particular application. So, don't ask me about the system yet. He's on the first one. He's on the first one, and he has to fly all over the country. But, uh, but, uh, but basically, that is kind of what you see. Is that we, you know, they came to our company, they told us what they wanted, we designed it, we implemented it, had a few hiccups here and there, because it is a big customer. You know, when we build these systems like that. But the beauty is, is that unlike Sage Paperless, uh, like Sage uh, uh, Inventory and PO, what you get out of that box is what you get. Okay? Our box is a little more flexible. And that's all for file system. That's what we are. We're trying to make it to where you've got a tool that you can build your own application and push it out to the phone. You've got a tool that you can go in and use our customers. 